Off top, Brock Purdy has been playing incredibly well this season, and I came into this game anticipating that this would be a big coming out party for Brock Purdy against the vaunted Chiefs defense. Then I watched the tape, and I got really concerned for Brock Purdy. All right, we're going to start a little bit away from Brock Purdy with the running game because we always know how important it is to stop the run and how important it is to have a successful running attack for the 49ers in order to set up the rest of the things that they want to do. So I watched last week's game against for the Chiefs against the uh, Saints, and some of the things that jumped out at me is how good the Chiefs are at stopping the run in, in part. It's pretty simple. Like, line play can get pretty specific, but let's watch – who's that, 98 right there? Who is that? Uh, Tish uh, Wharton. Watch 98. Watch the line of scrimmage. You see the line of scrimmage gets moved. Oh, my God. Back. (laughs) And the reason why that matters is this is a stretch or this is a zone play. And the decision make the, the longer you can put off decision, the more time you have for a defender to get out of their gap. When you push the line back into his lap like this, the decision has to be made now. He cuts back right into waiting arms. The linebackers flow incredibly quickly. I also want to highlight uh, McDuffie. McDuffie's one of the strongest, 22 right here on the edge, one of the strongest corners in football, I think. He holds up and sets the edge against a tight end. All right, this is the next play. This is a toss play. So you see how the inside stuff doesn't work, so they try to get out on the edge. They toss it to the right right. And again, I want you to keep an eye on McDuffie on this play, 22 to corner. He reads out of this crack block and gets involved in the run and holds up against that tight end, which uh, makes it a much more difficult run. The reason why I wanted you to look at McDuffie on those plays is because that's where I think that potentially the 49ers might be able to exploit this defense because their corners and their safeties are really aggressive to the run. And in this example, this was the 49ers' last game against the Seahawks. You can see Witherspoon up here in a similar position with McDuffie. He does a similar thing where he reads out. It looks like a crack, so he's going to replace on the crack. He comes free. So I expect the 49ers to bring this back and see if it works again. McDuffie seems to be a little bit more disciplined. Uh, So I'm not suspecting that this is going to destroy them, but this is a way that they could go ahead and attack and loosen up the run. But the big thing that I'm really worried about, about my man Brock Purdy, is coming into this game, I had been watching all of Purdy's games, and he had a lot of success, uh, which made me, I guess, believe that he was good against the Blitz. But he's not. He hasn't been this year. He's been good this year, but he hasn't been good against the Blitz. And... The Chiefs knew that, which is why they blitzed a lot and played a lot of man in the Super Bowl um, at a 50% rate, and they've been blitzing a lot this year also. But here is an example of the Chiefs blitzing against the Saints, and this is an opportunity to have success. It's zero blitz, man coverage. You got a matchup that you should like. It's Watson against Shahid. You should like this matchup. You have to win this. They throw it up. He doesn't make the play. But this is something that I think the 49ers have to look to – to take advantage of because they are definitely going to bl- to blitz Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy could not defeat the blitz in the Super Bowl. He has not been able to defeat the blitz so far this year. Here's another example of it. You have Johnson, I think, over there matched up in man-to-man coverage. Another attempt down the field that uh, misses. This is, again, this is the Saints game against the Chiefs. These are opportunities that were missed that the 49ers are not going to be able to miss. All right, so here to, again, last week's game. The 49ers against the Seahawks. This is the Seahawks with an all-out blitz. And this is kind of what Brock Purdy has looked like against the blitz. Again, zero blitz. He's unsure what to do with the ball. Uncertain, rolls out, and throws it out of bounds. I picked this one because it's the most recent one, but it's pretty much been like this all season, with the exception of that one corner route to Kittle against the blitz. This Seahawks defense was getting after him, and I think – The Chiefs are going to do the same. And play the music. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show. All right, let's welcome in our normal Friday guest, the great Mina Kimes, who I've been notified. Also, also Charlie's here. Oh, yeah. Uh, Vanilla snack. Less notable. Snack attack. Mina, do you know Charlie's friends or Charlie's fans call him or call themselves the snack pack? The snack pack? They do, with two C's. The snack pack. Yeah, because he's the vanilla snack, so they call themselves the snack pack. 
who are they? Do we know their demographics? What do we know about Largely them? women 25 to 35. That's the, okay. the snack pack. They they flood my um my timeline with uh snack pack. There's like text. four of them. Uh, and they love four. Yeah. <laughs> they love the snack. It's literally <laughs> the there are the same amount of them as like a, a an actual snack pack. <laughs> That's why they call itself the snack pack. Uh, all right. Have you guys thought about co-branding? <laughs> No? I know we need to call hostess. Um, all right, Mina, I've been notified that you all right. that this morning or yesterday morning on first take, you said that Brock <laughs> Purdy is better than Patrick Mahomes. Defend yourself. You're you're not allowed to reference anything I say on first Agreed. take that exists outside <laughs> the universe of this show. <laughs> can I can I get that same uh, protection? <laughs> I want a first take shit, a cloak <laughs> of first take freedom. I would love it be held accountable for the things that i felt to say in that format on that platform yes Stephen a protects it us be all like um you know like how when brock purdy plays the chiefs it doesn't count <laughs> towards his mvp games uh-huh. uh no look i i really liked your the plays that you highlighted there because i think we're gonna see a lot of that uh in this weekend's matchup and this chief's defense is really good yeah. They're better than they were last year against the run, which is amazing. The fact that they're as good in man coverage after letting Legereus Sneed walk is really impressive and a testament not only to C. Sagnola's development of DBs, but also the front office yeah. recognizing Chris Jones is the guy yeah. that we have yeah. to keep. And boy, is he. I think the, 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 the blitz thing is really interesting because I did notice a few times in the Seahawks game Brock bailing, which is something he has done over the course of his career. And I also noticed there, there were a few moments where he was able to escape and beat the Seahawks with his legs scrambling, which is another thing he has done at a pretty high rate this year. But against defenses uh, that are very, very, shall we say, good at tackling and good at limiting not just QB scrambles, but screens, things that you know, offenses use to beat the Blitz, like like the Chiefs. Um, it's going to be more challenging. He, to me, has to, and and I think in the Seahawks play, you saw this, he has to hit those short to intermediate routes over the middle of the field quickly against the blitz. The the thing about Spags, Dominic, and when he blitzes, it's either man or it's split safety sometimes, right? It's um, like a um, palms kind of 2-4 read situation, right? Yeah. So if you're San Francisco, like who do you, which of their players, because they don't have McCaffrey who they had in the Super Bowl, which which of those players do you think is the answer for Brock Purdy in a lot of these situations? <sighs> that's the problem. Is that's why I was getting nervous for Brock Purdy. <sighs> Charlie is so excited. He has so many takes that we will allow him to unveil at some point. But that's why I was getting nervous because I would say in man, you want someone who is going to separate and create separation, which I've been told by all the nerds that Brandon Ayuk is that dude. But I watched all the games this year. Nobody is getting. I don't know what the hell's yeah. going on yeah. with him, man. No one is getting separation. So he used to be that. Dude. Yeah, I don't know who the answer is. I mean, without Christian, there is not a clear answer. There's so many things that you said that I wanted to address because they do. I don't imagine they're going to do a lot of that split safety palm stuff against uh, the 49ers. I, I don't imagine they'll do that because they can play man and. Mm-hmm. They'll play a lot yeah, of man. They if, played a lot of man in the Super Bowl. Right. I know. And if you can play man against them, that's what you would rather play. The split safety stuff, I think, is to protect you a little bit um, and try to cover a bunch of things. So the check down is not going to be there if they don't do the zone. And they, they Spax has done a couple of the, like, um, sims where the linemen drop out into the middle. Not a lot of it. But if they do go to the zone, I imagine that's how they'll do it to protect against those check downs. But in man, the check down is not going to be there. Yeah. The screen pass, if they're disciplined, which the Chiefs are, even in their zone coverages, their linebackers are aggressive, which leaves the curl open. They're, like, aggressive to the short routes because I think they're protecting against these screens, which leaves the curl open. But I don't imagine they're going to play a lot of that. They're going to play man and force Purdy to execute and force these receivers to create separation and get open. And and that's not their strength. This is going to sound crazy, but it actually, thinking about the Super Bowl, like who can be, who can win those, because it's man coverage, mm-hmm. we agree. Who can win some of those favorable matchups, uh, like short, yeah. middle of the field. I could see Jawan Jennings weirdly <laughs> being important yet again for the San Francisco 49ers offense. Um, I thought you were going to say use check. The, the smile. <laughs> no. you, had, you had a smile on your face like you were about to say something that was uh, 
That was nuts. So I thought you were going to say Houston. Well, I, there, there's a name that we haven't mentioned on the Chiefs defense that probably should because he was the highest graded defensive player in the Super Bowl, Leo Chanel. And, like, he was so unique in the fact that he could play five positions yeah. and was, like, I don't know, can guard McCaffrey on some plays. And I think that, like, so much of it goes to – Let's not get crazy. Yeah, well, he cannot, he cannot, he cannot play, guard McCaffrey. But, but he was he was very good at, like, he's very good yeah. going downhill. Mm-hmm. He was good pressing the passer. He blew up a couple of screens, if I remember yeah. correctly. He can he's a, he's a really, he was fantastic at Super Bowl. But, Charlie, I'm glad you brought up the linebackers because, Dominique – San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl, and now they're going to play 21 personnel, even out with McCaffrey, yeah. Kyle Ustricks on the field constantly, and whatever running back. And the Seahawks, that's right, the Chiefs almost exclusively right. match 21 personnel with three linebackers on the field. Right. Those linebackers are very good coming downhill <laughs> in coverage. Yeah. That to me, right. if there is a weakness in this defense, that is it. I. The Niners, it's funny because they're no longer like a play-action passing right. attack the way that they yeah. used to be. I would go heavy play-action against this Chiefs defense. Right. I, so, yeah, I think you're right. That's what they want to do. But I think that the thing about play-action is it works great, I think, against teams that are not very – I don't say not very disciplined, but it, it's meant to attack someone who doesn't get a good. Seattle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like attack people who don't get good run pass reads. And that was yeah. that's not what I get from these linebackers. So they seem to know that it's play action. That doesn't mean they can always cover it, but they seem to know that it's play action. And I also believe that they want to do a lot of man coverage. And the thing about the man coverage is that comes down to discipline. Because I don't think that these these if they're in twenty one personnel, I don't see and George Kittle is good, obviously, but he's gonna get covered by a safety, which the safeties, the chief safeties aren't great in coverage, but they'll be fine in that situation. And it's harder oh. as long as you're disciplined in your in your reads, like it's harder to get open in play action against man than it is against yeah. zone, in my view. Because zone, if you you come yeah. up hard and then they drop it in behind you, which is the like Debo yeah. right. is the one that I would I think could be pivotal in that regard yeah. right because he's the one who's especially I mean I think Seattle they had a great play action play where he was coming out of the backfield if yep. I remember I don't know if they had two backs in or one but um, what I loved about that play in Seattle and I think that's something that could also be pertinent here is uh, they used a lot of play action to attack the flats mm-hmm. it wasn't you know just the middle of the field and I think um you know, defenses that play the Niners tend to be very worried about taking away the middle of the field. Seattle's a great example. So there tend to be, there tends to be grass there for the taking. Um, so that would be a matchup I would look for. But like, it's not going to be. I, your your point is really. The, I'm not saying the Chiefs are bad at defending play action. I don't I don't have it in front of me. I don't think they are. I'm just saying if there is one group position group yeah. on this roster that I would want to find a way to attack in coverage, that would be it. actually like. I mean, the problem is the. I'm not sure that the 49ers have the weapons, but what I think I would want to attack is the safeties, and but yeah, the detail, yeah. yeah, and and that's also might also be eliminated by the coverages that they play. So if you're gonna give me too high, I would love to get a receiver, a fast receiver on the safeties as quickly as possible. That was the little bit of success that the Saints had was uh, those type of plays. Like, get Shahid on the safety's toes as quick as possible. I don't think that the 49ers have that guy. At least Ayuk's not playing like that guy. And the problem with that also is you have to protect. And the one name that we haven't mentioned, or you already mentioned, I guess, Chris Jones is the best. Yeah is the best player on the field, and there are some plays that he just completely saves. One thing you said earlier about man coverage that I wanted to bring up, the Chiefs are good in man coverage, very good in man coverage, but there are opportunities to beat them in man coverage. And that's Chris Jones reminded me, bringing him up, reminded me of that point. When I watched I watched all their man snaps this morning, there were people, and this is it's man coverage. People are going to get open. There are people running free, and these corners um, play as if they run four ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you see Watson, like he's not the fastest guy on earth, but he's squatting. He's squatting in, in zero and in man, he's squatting. And it works out because the pressure gets there. It works out. Um, sometimes he makes a play or sometimes there's an errant pass. Like there's, But there are people pulling away from him in particular. How much of this, when you guys look at this matchup, neither one of these teams have been efficient in the red zone at all this year, which one makes me think that we 
even with how highly we value Christian McCaffrey, might have even underestimated his value. But how much of this matchup is just going to come down to people who can ex- execute within the 20s? Well, I mean, the Niners' red zone issues have been really interesting um, because there's no, like, one reason. Absolutely, the absence of Christian McCaffrey, I think, is a huge part of it. Some of it is on the quarterback, in my mind. But some of it is kind of, like, a little bit of what Dominique and I are talking about with regards to, okay, who's gonna who's your guy who beats man coverage? Mm-hmm. I actually think the lack of, I don't want to call it decline because it's been kind of confusing and it's early in the season, but Ayuk yeah. not being who he was last year has really hurt them, not only against man mm-hmm. coverage potentially in this game, but I think in the red zone uh, because, yeah, they can still run the ball, but we know when they're like, kind of in the high red zone and pretty it's they don't really f- it's funny it's so weird because they have really good players so <laughs> and really good plays we think but it's not working yeah and I like I mentioned I I hadn't like broken down this team in a way that I did today so like in my mind because I watch all their games and I'm like Brock Purdy is oh, Brock Purdy is really good like I feel like Brock Purdy is playing well and then I watch yeah. for specific scenarios and I'm like ooh I think the offensive line hurts them a lot more in the red zone yeah. too than it does in other parts of the field where they've been able to scheme around it a bit more by the way I didn't look this up but while you were talking I did the Chiefs are 30th in success rate against play action Ugh. this year. Ugh. So to go and then yeah, most they're also 24th in EPA play. So yeah, that that is something. I think I that definitely, that checks yeah. out when you watch the way like they do run blitzes. You watch how like it's clear that it's a it's a point of emphasis. It's like we're yes. going to stop the run, and they are aggressively stopping the run, and there's a cost for it. Sometimes you don't get the come downhill that way and and not um compromise yourself on occasion and those run blitzes make them vulnerable yeah. dominique like they're someone could break off yeah. explosive runs i don't know if it's the niners uh, though. is that isaac garendo's music <laughs> the four uh, three three who hasn't I, I, hey, that, that's not a four three three speed. uh yeah i watched yeah. i watched <laughs> the I was, whole seahawks game i actually and was, that is not a four three three yeah. i was actually wondering that he just doesn't look as fast as like yeah. someone like Chase Brown, even who's like, I don't get it. The one thing that we didn't we didn't mention, we brought up Christian's name, but the other benefit of Christian McCaffrey and um, is what team, it's it's kind of the um, Lamar Jackson situation where there are some coverages that you're like Lamar Jackson's never gonna see two man, like it's just not gonna happen. And like Christian McCaffrey, there's some coverages that you're just not going to run or situations that you're not going to put your players in when Christian McCaffrey's on the field. And so like uh, Brock Purdy was pretty good, was not pretty good. He was good against the Blitz yeah. last year, or at least the team's numbers were good against the Blitz last year. And I feel like it's directly connected to Christian McCaffrey, where we know that mm. Christian McCaffrey in isolation, like you could have a zone dropper lineman on most running backs or you could isolate even a safety on most running backs and be comfortable with it or allow for a check down that you'll all rally and tackle these are things that I feel like teams might be hesitant to call against them if Christian was out there oh 100 percent actually let me look that okay yeah. sorry I know you're, you're as you're talking it's like so the, the yeah. 49ers have faced a ton of yeah. man coverage yeah. this year and that's I imagine that that would change if Christian was out there which doesn't mean that Christian is going to make the play but it means that he has a huge value and makes life a lot easier for everyone else. And that might also be the trickle down to, because we talk about this often about who is the defense, like who's the first name that we're going to mention on Wednesday, the first day of defensive install. What is our first priority? It used to be Christian McCaffrey. Now it's got to be Brandon Ayuk, which could be the trickle down to how you stop this team. Charlie, you remember when we at the Super Bowl we had a bunch of players came come on the Meeting Time Show featuring Lenny. Check, Check it, it on out. YouTube, and it was we interviewed uh, Miles Garrett and Denzel Ward from the Browns, who were one of the very few teams that did very well against the Niners, and they play a ton of man coverage. And I remember asking them like, you know, how hard is this? Like, um, do you think that's like replicable? And I can't remember which one of them said this, but they were like, most teams cannot man up Christian McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. Like, he is the guy who. You know, maybe you got like a, a stud CB1 and maybe you have, you know, but like right. a really great slot. Yeah. But are you going to put your slot on McCaffrey? And, you know, it, it, it's yeah. he was 
sort of the skeleton key for that offense in a lot the, of ways. There's actually a hilarious montage if you go up. It's on Mina's YouTube page. There's a montage of a bunch of NFL players who are basically like, you don't understand how good Christian McCaffrey is, but I can't bet against Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and it happened exactly. That was literally everybody's what... take. Ahead of, and it was, yeah, exactly how it Christian out, McCaffrey yeah. um, is a difference maker at running back. It almost makes you think that, like, maybe running backs matter. I mean, he's getting I less mean, than half as much guaranteed money he runs as Brennan Ayuk. Routes like an elite wide receiver. Yeah. There's just there's no other running back who runs routes like him. Uh, I mean, some running backs don't run routes, and they're still impactful. I don't know. Wait, are you going to pick the Chiefs? Me failing to uh, me failing to uh, piss off Mina is a good place to stop. Yeah, uh, we have, we don't pick this game. We're picking games now. I know. I just want to know. I'm curious. We can pick this you got game. me all nervous about taking the Niners. I'll tell you why I'm taking the Niners. Uh, that defense. Do we think Juju Smith Schuster can catch over seventy five yards again? <laughs> that's the that's the problem. Um, yeah, that's the scary part. We're not when I looked at like the stats for both of these teams, it's very much like they are both much closer to our imagination of the opposing team than they actually are because mm -hmm. like the yeah. 49ers are a good passing team and the the Chiefs are a good rushing team and the 49ers I mean the Chiefs defense is the strength of their team and we always saw like the 49ers defense is very yeah. very hard to look yeah. at I, I got one this is sort of a macro view of this game though because five weeks into the season the Chiefs are obviously they're they're five and oh mm -hmm. but the NFC is also sort of a mess. Which of these teams do you think at this point is actually more likely to go to the Super Bowl? Based on the video on Mina's uh, YouTube page, Patrick Mahomes is still here <laughs> and Christian isn't. So <laughs> that makes it pretty easy. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, probably the Chiefs. The Chiefs, I, the, the Ravens, but I feel like the the NFC yeah. is like deeper, yeah. right? The, the three AFC North has teams. more top end. So. That's fair. They'll have so to we're run picking this game. More of a gauntlet. You're picking the. You got to go through the whole NFC North. You're picking Jesus. the 49ers. I did take the Niners largely because I have get yeah. concerns about this Chiefs offense. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably the smarter way to go. They both have good defenses, um, and the 49ers actually have some ability to score. But I, I think I I was anticipating coming in this game like Brock Purdy showing his. And everybody being like in prime time, we can finally put to rest the um, is it Brock Purdy or is it the offense? But then I watched the tape and I was like, oh, uh, Brock Purdy's gonna have a tough time this week. I guess I can close this segment by being the one brave soul to pick Patrick Mahomes to win a football game. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we don't have to close the segment all the way, don't we? Got to pick games. And stuff? Uh, do we have to? Oh. I finally won. <laughs> oh, okay, so you don't want to do it anymore. I want, I, no, I tell, <laughs> tell everyone my record in our survival. okay. Mina's record. Let me bring it up. Stand Mina, by. Mina is a competitive sicko. A monster. I didn't know that. Mina is five and one. Dominique is three and three. I am also five and one. I'm three I had and my three. First, I had my first loss. You're not five and one. You're one and five. Depends how you look at it. <laughs> how am I three and three? It's ridiculous. Who did you take last week? Dominique took the Eagles last week. I took the Jaguars, who let me down at their home field in London, and Mina took the Falcons. Okay, we can all make a pick. Dominique, who are you picking this week? I don't know. Um, who's available? You have taken the Seahawks, Colts, Bengals, Cowboys. Oh, you took the Seahawks twice. Did I? <laughs> yeah. Oops. How did the I Eagles. do that? How I did I take the Seahawks twice? Yes, you did. How did I do that? No way. I think your 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 um system is off. Whose fault is that, Charlie? I, that's my fault. I didn't did not alert you. I definitely didn't take the Seahawks twice. We took them in week one and in week four or week five. Week one. All right. So I got to pick a loser here. Um, I am going to. Hmm. But I have to pick the loser that's the winner. Oh, you're still doing this foolishness? Yeah. Just okay. pick normal. You already lost the bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. In in that case, hmm. 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 You know what? I'm going to take the Jets over the Steelers. <laughs> 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 it's a fun one to pick. What a gross game. Uh, that is gross. I'll take the Bengals over the Browns. I'll take the Commanders over the Panthers. I'm just going to keep choosing teams against the Panthers. Bengals over the Browns. Great. All right. Thanks, Mina. Next up, Joel Anderson. All right. Welcome, our great guest, the perfectly great Joel Anderson. Like, uh, I, I, so this is a weird thing about me. Wow. I like, okay. I like gray. I want more gray. Mm. I am... Really? Staunchly opposed to my wife dying or picking any grays out. I like gray. I think it looks mm. great. And I understand that maybe you don't want too much, but right. I think you got you got the perfect amount. I like that. 
Well, first, I appreciate you saying that. Thank you for saying that. I mean, you're a good looking man. So I mean, I feel like I can, you know, we can commiserate. And Charlie, I mean, we know what yeah, your nickname nah, is. I'm I not going to say it. But, you know. You can say I, it. I, you can say that he's the vanilla accept, snack. I could say it. <laughs> I could. But two, I don't think I can. Two C's like, if you guys are spelling online. I appreciate snack pack. Not about to call no another man, no, no, no another grown man delicious. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but That's a classic stand up. It, in it, in it though, yeah. um, but you know, I, you know, my wife does not like my grades. Really? and actually wants me to cheat. Oh my mm. god, I've got so much just for men in my bathroom, and I just feel like it's undignified. I just <laughs> so <laughs> you and I, I, I think um, we're of similar generations, and yes. I feel the same way. But I got a, I got a confession to make to you. Uh oh, oh no, yeah. So two two confessions actually. I'm coming clean to Joel Anderson today because oh. because Joel and I had we'll talk about our kids later because we had a little conversation <laughs> there. Two confessions. Confession number one. I be telling a little fib with my hairline on TV sometimes. Oh, I hate okay, it. Okay. I hate it. But I hate it. I, H- I didn't know if you were H- gonna admit the pencil. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pencil H- comes out. Yeah. HD change. HD changed the game. I look. You on camera a lot more, so no, I understand. I don't, Anything I don't you gotta do. No, I appreciate you as a friend <laughs> trying to give me yeah. an out. I don't want you out. I'm gonna stand by it. I do it, uh, and it just started this year. And I don't love oh, it about myself. Man. I don't love do it about myself. Do you think it's running away from you? I got a bigger one. I got a bigger one. Oh no! What? I got. I got some tox. Got oh some, yeah. Got some Botox. And really? I hate that too. I hate that too. Wow! Well, actually, You've gone to a whole nother game now, bro. That's I not even. I don't hate the pencil. I'm fine with that. I yes. do. The Botox is bad because. I've come to believe that the wrinkles in my forehead made my hairline look a little better because it was it was some confusion, you know. We had we had something happening. The crossing so you, route. Yeah, it was. Some, we had a mess going right here that confused me. Yeah. Now when it's smooth, it's just open field. You got. But well, wait, wait, wait. Forty yards. You didn't do this. Who made you? Your, your wife made you do this, right? My wife. Yeah, my wife. She didn't make me, but she was like, she made me feel like it was she okay. <laughs> she made me feel like it was okay. Then I did it and was like, actually, this is not who I am. Is, oh, no. Joel, there's oh, like, there's a, a tiny one. backstory in this was that Ashley came into the office and I got Botox for the first time. And then we talked about it. And then Dominique was like, wow. We'll do it live all, all the time. <laughs> I didn't realize that it wears off. So once I knew that it wore off, I was like, all right, we give it a shot. We give it the a shot. The world is changing on me so much. Right? Like, I just, I just, I, like I am shocked that you have done that, and that you also would admit it. I'm yeah. glad you know. Look, man, we need to take away the nah, stigma. That's, that's you know what I'm saying? No, like, no, 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 no. I'll keep no beauty. Keep, keep the stigma. Keep the stigma. <laughs> I would like. I can I would like to. I can't do it there. myself. No, I cannot do that myself. I don't think. I was, but if I have to be on camera, I don't know what I might do. I might. But the fact of the matter is, the thing. Mm-hmm. The thing is, it doesn't matter. Like I, no. not for me. <laughs> like, really? I, I'm not on TV because I'm handsome. I'm a man. Oh. Like I, I don't like I could be fat. I could be ugly. I, you know, I still think even for men, there's a little bit of a you know you got to have a little bit of a look. You, you don't, don't sit very don't watch, often. You don't watch TV, huh? Clearly, you don't watch. No, TV. I don't. I don't. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, we told you I got two small kids, so no. Oh, yeah. I don't, actually, you don't watch actually, TV. I don't. It's, it's, actually, I don't. Yeah. But I mean, it's, I'm trying to think of everybody on TV I see is good looking. No, but I feel like. You can't be ugly and be on TV. Now, you know, ugly is like a real a discriminatory mm-hmm. thing. Fair. Like that That's class fair. of folk, like they, they're able to get discriminated against. Nobody talks about That's it, fair. right? Because yeah. who wants to say that they're part of that community? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'm done with I'm done with the talks. I'm not I'm so not giving big admissions. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean, that would feel comfortable, man. I, bro, well, look, I, I've been in public and like people have probably seen me without my gray. Yeah. And it just I'm like, come on. I just. <sighs> You know, what am I doing here? I'm not Ronald Reagan. The, you know I mean? <laughs> the hardest part to me is the part that no one sees. And so, like, when I take my little pencil, and it's just the corners. We, talk, <laughs> we talked about this before. It's just the corners. Yeah. When I take my little pencil and touch up my corners and I see myself in a mirror, I'm ashamed. But the, And I imagine that you combing some dye through your beard, you look in the mirror like, what what yo this have is I this become? is not me i'm <laughs> not this person i am not this person i'm not i try i pretend that i'm not vain right but, but the thing is my hairline i've never had any insecurity yeah. about and i never forget i was in college i was visiting my homeboy once and uh i went to the bathroom and i saw him like doing a little pencil he was like 20 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh. And I was just like, so I've had to be sensitive about this around my friends for a very long time. And I was like, you look, man, favor ain't fair. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. <laughs> Why God did this, right? But he made me, he, gra- he grade me to humble me. He grade me to humble me. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I told Charlie this a long time ago is that I don't like, I was in middle school, like sixth grade, sixth or seventh grade, and the girl I liked liked another guy <laughs> who had uh, like hazel eyes and deep waves. Oh, and I was man. like, I was like, all right. Waves. I was like, all right, guess I got to get a do rag and some pomade. <laughs> I got a do-rag, I got some pomade, I stuck to it for a week and a half, and I looked in the mirror and said, this ain't me, somebody hand me the rock. You know how You know how I'm gonna get attractive? Oh, By being some, good at some, it. Somebody gonna like it, yeah. somebody gonna like it eventually yeah. someday. I don't have to do that. Man, I, you, you know what, Fox, that's the first time I have ever heard of a woman saying that she liked waves. I mean, I, mean, I know that, this in our community yeah. that waves are a big deal and i right. did the waves thing for a little bit mm-hmm. but like have you it's kind of like wearing a, a chain <laughs> like have you ever heard of a woman be like man i just you know i could i saw his chain and i had to go home with him have you i've never heard that the, before in my life i've the, heard rappers say it but i don't believe that it's actually happening yeah i mean i think that the chain is just about it's like a car it's essentially yeah. like it's you are you're peacocking so i don't know that anyone <laughs> likes the chain but they like oh are those real? Well, then right. you, mu- you must be talented or good at something, uh, no matter what it is, which that is attractive. But the waves, I would say I hadn't until recently. Oh. Yeah, because somehow on the Internet, the Beyonce uh, lyric from her song with the uh, low cut season with the deep waves is like a sound oh. that people are attaching and people and maybe it's just big wave. Mm. Maybe maybe it's lusters and it's the do rag industry seeing these things because they are Look, going man. down. TikTok's got big wave on its side. <laughs> Look, man, I once read in a now defunct magazine uh, a t- an interview with Tony Braxton, and she said that her favorite smell was uh, sandalwood oil. <laughs> and because I saw it, I started wearing sandalwood oil for like the next five six years. I still I still have sandalwood oil in my bathroom, like on the counter right now. But you know, say so women would do that to you yeah, you know like yeah. it's they can they can set they can set the standard for us and i, I mean d- i dodged I, that i told you it was the it was the seventh grade it was bruce in the seventh grade he changed my life he saved me a lot of time and effort because at no point bro. from then on i ain't start like i ain't buy no cologne my clothes was plain <laughs> i ain't care about nothing i was gonna tote that rock until somebody Look. looked over and said mm, he's cute <laughs> she focused you. She focused I you. Know. Like yeah, that. I yeah, it. yeah, I appreciate it. It's unbelievable. It you happens. didn't have the identity crisis. Oh, the, the did. early teen Bruce. identity crisis is a rite of passage. I avoided it. All of that. Like it's. it's but funny. wait. But what happened to Bruce? Like, did Bruce go on him? <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Bruce, That's offline. That's yeah. <laughs> no, no. It's, it could be online. It could, yeah. Bruce was not only good looking, but he was also um, tough. <laughs> Oh, okay. But the okay. thing he about was, being if you tough, say the element. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The element took care of Bruce. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bruce Bruce Man. did Bruce did a couple bids and I also believe oh. that Bruce is uh on the other side. He's on the other side. Uh, ah, yeah. got you. He got didn't you, get got to you. the point where he could have beautiful grays like us. <laughs> Oh man! Well, yeah. you know, man, them hazel eyes sometimes it makes you have to prove some stuff, man. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's an overcompensation, so you, but yeah, yeah right. uh, take that, Chanel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chanel, you're really naming names today. Yeah, really I just, made, names I just made that up. I was joking. That's not really oh, okay. Okay. Oh, right. man. I, if you were gonna do it, I was gonna do it. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right, we're supposed to do a football here at some point, <laughs> as you know. Uh, on Fridays, we do our good game, guilty pleasure game. Uh, Joel, you want to start? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm a Houstonian. Uh-huh. And with D'Amico and CJ, so I'll just tell you how, how I'm built, uh, guys. Mm-hmm. Like, when I lived in Tampa for a year and they had Raheem Morris as the head coach and Josh Friedman as the quarterback, I was like, this is – I could get behind this. <laughs> so you can't, you see where I'm coming from, <laughs> right? Of course. Right. Okay. And so that's like the, – the, the Texans have now caught my interest – and I have some expectations of them, you know, what I mean? but so I'm, I'm picking the Texans Packers game. And some of this is because, look, the Texans division is terrible. Yeah. Like, I mean, they've got I feel like they should get six wins out of that. Right. Like that. 
I, they should not lose to anybody, but you know, conferences are weird. But like playing the NFC North, which is actually the toughest division probably in football right mm-hmm. now, makes us really interesting. And like, you know, kind of the CJ Stroud, Jordan Love thing. Both of these teams like have two of the most explosive offenses in the league. Um, so I think it's, it could be fun. It could have a lot of fireworks. And I feel like, and I heard uh, Jason say this last week, or maybe you guys talked about like, with the Texans, it's always like, all right, this is the game that you're supposed to win if you're going to be a serious right. contender. But that's always going to – because we – I mean, like, as, as as our friend says, we've seen their movies. Like, yeah. the Texans have been terrible for so long. And so you kind of – they have to keep doing it to prove that they're who we think they're going to be. And so, like, winning this game on the road, maybe the best team they've played this season, or one of the best teams they've played, on, and beating them on the road, I think actually really say something about the direction mm-hmm. that team is headed in. That's a fair point. I think we've been talking about the Texans as if they're a Super Bowl contender uh, for – all of this season and the off season. And they've right. yet to have that series of big wins where you can fully have faith in them. Uh, but the quarterback, this is the thing that I've been trying to to say about CJ Stroud all season because his numbers aren't great, Yeah, but right. he's a, he's a, um, a tape watcher's dream when you're watching, even mm-hmm. if it doesn't complete the pass, even if the play doesn't work, like you can watch the tape and it's clear to him that he, or it's clear that he is calm. He understands what's happening. He knows how to execute against. And I, I, I go back to the Minnesota game often because they got the right. beat, but right. it was a, a very stark difference between all the other quarterbacks that were getting their beat against Minnesota and how frantic they looked and how CJ looked and felt in the pocket in in those games so like I've been really impressed with him and then on the other side is Jordan Love who's I he kind of came into the year as one of the darlings also as they're the two together yeah I mean Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the Stroud thing is amazing because he he hits like every mark of everyone um like he is the tape watcher's dream but he's also the casual stream where it's like look at how that guy throws that (laughs) <laughs> like it comes out of his hand yeah. Yeah. so pure. And like, I, like they lost Nico Collins to IR for four weeks, who was playing as the best receiver in football through the first five weeks of the season. The and it's like, nope, it doesn't matter. We'll just start like stretching the field with Tank Dell, who's come back from a broken leg and a gunshot wound and is finally starting to play well. <laughs> I mean, I think this game is fascinating because this is, this is the good vibes bowl. Like both of these teams, it took a couple weeks for Jordan Love to come back from the MCL and it took a couple weeks for the Texans offense to get out of – the mud they were in of like run the ball in first and second down, be less predictable. And both of them now are coming in being like, we're playing the best football we've played period. Are they both on the same tier though? Because I feel like they yeah. both are on that yeah. kind of go ahead, Joe. No, no, I think so. And you know, uh, our, our, well, Nick Wright is not my friend. Uh, I like him, but he's my friend in my head, but he was, he did this thing he talked about in the preseason. Like he thought, one or one or both of these teams would like fall back this year. They're like, you know, they uh, they surprised people last year, right. and it's like it's like sometimes with a good team, you know, they just can't sustain the defense gets hurt, something like this. The quarterback regresses, but they both like do seem to be on the same trajectory. And there's not enough good teams in the league to yeah. say, hey, they might be able to play in the Super Bowl. Like that is kind of wild to say already at this point in the development, but like. I mean, if the Chiefs, you know, they don't look like world beaters right now. So it, it, it's possible. The thing that's funny to me about both of these guys is they are both, it feels like they should be at the do it in the playoffs phase or beat a good team. Yeah. But they both did it in the playoffs last year, or at least got one win in the playoffs last year and yeah. um, could have won the second game. The the uh, the Packers, at least, could have won their yeah. second game. The Should have won, yeah. I thought. The Texans didn't really yeah. have a chance against the Ravens at that point. But – it still feels like they, and maybe this is just me anecdotally. Anecdotally, it still feels like they have it. Charlie's smiling. This must be. <laughs> go ahead, Charlie. Go ahead oh, I just saying, like, I, no, no, it's not that. Me. I was just saying, like, can you imagine how happy CJ Stroud is going to be going and winning a playoff game this year, and then going up to the other quarterback and being like, "Keep working, young blood. You'll get there <laughs> one day." <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst. That was the worst thing that CJ Stroud has done. He's had a perfect career. He OG'd him. Yeah, you can't. He OG'd him. You can't be a sophomore out here OGing people. It's not. But wait, but I, and I thought people that people got thought Caleb was being weird about it. I was like, no, I don't think I want you. You're my peer, bro. Yeah. Like, are we like the same age? Don't talk to me like yeah, that. You I didn't know? realize people were thought that Caleb was being weird about it. Yeah, get your hands off me. Yeah. What are you talking yeah, bro, about? Don't talk to me like say that. Say nice yeah. game. <laughs> say say something encouraging. Yeah. This is what you say. All right, bro, stay healthy. That's it. Right, Good right. luck to you. Good I, fight. I mean, yeah, he could be like, hey, man, I'll see you at the Heisman house. Yeah. Oops, nah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I mean, Caleb could big man him like that. That's what Caleb right? should have said back. Yeah. <laughs> the question in this game, though, at least for me, is how good are uh, the 
Packers defense. At mm-hmm. some point, they're yeah. going to have to play some defense. And I think statistically, they're pretty good, but it's largely based on like a high turnover rate early right. in the season that – I don't necessarily – this is also some inherent bias from watching the Packers year after year be incredibly talented and never quite put a good defense on the field where I'm like, I'm not going to believe that the Packers can play defense until yeah. I get a couple seasons of it, and we'll see. Yeah, I mean, turnover differential is always like one of those things. It's like that could stop, mm-hmm. right, in football. Like if I'm, I'm, a T, you know, I'm a TCU alum. Yeah. The year they went to the national championship game, a lot of turnovers. They, t- they did turnover differential, but, like, you can't recreate that every year. You know, everybody ain't Peanut Tillman out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, um, I cleared their, the turnovers in, like, did EPA and the uh, true media for how good their defense is without turnovers. So, like, all the turnovers in the league took them out. They're 18th in the league. You take the turnovers away, which, like, it's not completely fair because they are creating some of those turnovers. But if you want to see who just playing straight up good defense, you get the Tennessee Titans, top of that list. That's the best defense in football. You take the turnovers. Wow. Shout out to Nard. Yeah, shout out to um, Day Day, my college teammate. Day Day, the best D coordinator in football. Get that man a head coaching job. Oh, that's what's up. Okay. All right. Um, Yeah, that's how old I am. Man, look. (laughs) My friends are D coordinators now. (laughs) I mean, look, bro, I have a, a, a former college classmate uh, or teammate whose son is like a third year starter in the NFL. Oh. What, 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 how old is Baron Browning? How old is he? How many years has Baron Browning been in the league? Uh, Three or four years? Um, Long enough that uh, you have gray hairs. All yeah, the, right. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I yeah. These, are, these are legit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, no. are, look, those, those are earned. Fourth season. Fourth season. Man. Fourth season. Baron Brown. And, and he, has a, he has an older brother who graduated from Stanford and played in the little league before in the league a little bit before then. So, yeah, man, we, we old out here, bro. These, these gray hairs are real. Yeah, it's, it's a problem when it's not like the kid who had a baby when he was 15. It's like, no, nah. you had a baby at the right time, and, like, and your I baby's in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's just, yeah, man, it just happens to us like that. All yeah. of a sudden, you become the OG, but, which is, CJ, look, man, I, I have the right to be, oh, you know, yeah. big man somebody. Don't be doing that to people, man. Just be cool. Be cool. We still love you, though. Charlie, you want to give your – um. Your good game? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm gonna. I'm I'm sort of cheating because I'm skipping ahead to the Monday night game. We don't normally do that, but I'm really excited for Ravens Buccaneers. Yeah, and the Ravens have become the measuring stick team in the NFL to me, even above the Chiefs. Like I know every year you have Lamar Jackson out there, you're gonna have a top five offense by DVOA. They've had great defenses in the past. To me, this year feels different. It feels incredibly easy for them to move the ball in ways where it's not just Lamar making magic. And I know that there's a really simple explanation for it. You got Derrick Henry. You thought that Derrick Henry was going to be a touchdown vulture on this team. It's like, nah, he actually might just run for 2,000 yards, which is crazy. And like their defense is a little bit, a little bit worse, but their offense just seems so much more complete, even with a washed up Mark Andrews. Or I shouldn't say washed up, coming back from injury, Mark Andrews, who had his first good week of the year last year. And then the other side of it, the Bucks are fascinating. Like yeah, they're pretty good. Baker Mayfield was in the football wilderness for two years, and we thought that last year was about Dave Canales, and he's playing by far and away the best football of his career this year. And it's a point that Dominique's made that to stress the Ravens' defense, you need to have playmakers who make them break their scheme. And this Bucks team actually has two of them. Moving Godwin to the slot, he's playing at Pete Godwin again, and Mike Evans. You know if Mike Evans plays against an, an aggressive defense, he's either going to go off or get into a fight. One of the two. And like, yeah, those, I, I hope it's go off for, yeah. for um, Nate Wiggins' right. sake because Nate it's Wiggins a, is my size. Galveston. Yeah. But, so it's, 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 just, it's a Galveston in it, man. You know what I'm saying? Fun, fun matchup. I mean, I'm sure the Ravens will roll them, but measuring stick game for the, for the Bucks. No, no, I'm yeah. not sure. But at least measuring stick game for them. Yeah, the book the Bucks are a good team. I mean, the thing the thing that's just really interesting about the Ravens, and I saw that they lead the league in explosive plays. So mm-hmm. that's like runs of twelve yards or longer and passes sixteen yards or longer. And they're like far and away, like they're like eight ahead of like second place, right? So I mean, like you can expect that they're going to hit some big stuff, but um, I mean, I just I don't know. Like I I, I feel like a, a good a, a decent defense can kind of if you can take that stuff away and make them work for it. Like of course. Of course, of course, the Bucks could could put a little scare into this. Yeah, week. Lamar's accuracy is the point that I would yeah. I, the thing that I would point out that he's been pretty accurate this year, and that was yeah. like if he's there isn't a coverage to beat Lamar if he's if he can pass it accurately because his athleticism forces you into um, situations that 
create openings in the back end. If he can exploit it, then this should be a rolling. And your your point about the receiver is like, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it, it could end up like a shootout, like yeah. Cincinnati, where, again, it was two good receivers, a bad defense, and the Ravens struggled um, to put them, put them away, but they moved the ball with ease. Yeah. All right, we got to get rolling. We had a lot of time talking. I mean, I guess we also don't have to do all the games if we don't want to. My good game is Lions-Vikings. It's a great game. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's going to be a good game, bro. I mean, so, like, I mean, everybody keeps talking about the Sam Darnold thing, man. I, I believe in him, dog. I believe in Sam Darnold, man. <laughs> okay, so that that you can't say that and think I'm not going to say why. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was just going to well, so, let you. You thought I was just going to yeah, say, I, 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 I got a feeling. I, I, look, I mean, I'm not saying Sam Darnold is going to be John Elway, oh. right? But I feel like, could he be Brad Johnson, Elvis Gerbach, you know, the year that he was mm. kind of a, you know, MVP candidate? I feel like he could be that quite. So the thing is, I covered Sam a little in his last year at USC. Oh. And I thought he got some, he developed some really bad habits of pressing and everything else. And I think that when he got to the NFL, it only got exacerbated because he didn't have the supporting cast around him. I feel like this is the first time that this is an offense that like he doesn't have to be great. Like yeah. he can just be okay and they don't depend on him. And I think if like you don't ask him to do too much, why can't he be in the league? I mean, it seems like he's headed that way anyway. Yeah. That he's going to be in the league for another decade or so. So, yeah. I'm yeah, the other side of that matchup is the one that is most interesting to me is that defense of uh, the yeah. Vikings matching up against this offensive line and the offense uh, of the Lions to see um, who comes out on top and what the Lions have been incredibly good with scheming and the, the funny thing is they are a hard nose smash mouth football team that wants more than anything else to run over you but the scheming behind that I think has been really impressive to see what answers they have for a defense that no one seemed to have answers for yet and the Vikings defense should be fun that's what I'm interested in seeing yeah you know what I mean I we've gotten this far like I'm interested in the defense also but it's the Lions defense because like I feel like there's a high mm. of like we have to kick the out of the Cowboys because of the Dan Skipper penalty last year. Um, that's going to wear off, and they're going to look around and be like, oh, the heart and soul of our defense, which is actually like a lot of times exaggerated, but it's not with Aiden Hutchinson. Like Of the great pass rushers, he was like a uniquely high-motor player. And Dominique, you've, you've made this point before. They don't have a ton of talent to create pressures other right. than him. And so over an extended period of time against a really creative offensive scheme, like K KOC is a really good coach in Minnesota, I am excited to see, or I shouldn't say excited. I'm interested to see if things stabilize in a good way or a bad way for the Lions defense. Yeah, I mean, what a bummer, man. Yeah. I feel bad, you know. Yeah. Oh, it sucks. And he hasn't gotten paid yet. I, I mean, I, fingers crossed he'll, he'll be healthy at the start of next year and we'll get paid. Har uh, he hasn't even, right. Dan Campbell hasn't even ruled him out to come back for the playoffs, which is crazy. Yeah, it's insane. But yeah, it's, he's a foundational piece that it's hard to recover from. There's not like a scheme to make up for losing a player like that who is – all, not only the heart and soul, he's like the yeah. the one standout player uh, on that defense that you kind of have to game plan for. I just realized I almost called uh, Dan Campbell uh, Jim Harbaugh, and I think that's a completely reasonable mistake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're kind of men cut from the same cloth in a manner of speaking, right? You know, like I feel like they both – they both would get really excited about Denim. playing Monopoly. Yeah, that's, well, that's, that that's the cloth. Yeah. That's the cloth yeah. that they're cut from. <laughs> and they are both cut from the this same cloth. Yeah. yeah, I feel like yeah. they both wake up and look in the mirror and say, "The body craves contact." <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I can't imagine them getting both times. Why would you want dry fit? Don't you want your Don't you want your body to not? <laughs> why would you want to feel comfortable in your clothes? Yeah. <laughs> Who would win in a fight? Uh, Dan Campbell. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. sometimes size is. I mean, I don't know. Be, I mean, I, I actually think that Jim Harbaugh is crazier, but definitely right, yeah. not even close. I think Harbaugh has more want to. Yeah, I think Harbaugh so would it, have more want it, to. He is going two rounds at least. Uh, that, <laughs> Jim is taking him to the second round. I don't want Campbell to get his hands on me, dog. I, yeah. like, I don't know. I don't know what kind of job, what That's kind of jab true. Harbaugh got, but if, if, I feel like if Campbell gets off. his hands on you, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my um guilty pleasure game is Jet Steelers. So we might get Russ. Ooh. I don't think we'll get Russ, but we could. Uh, that'd be fun, interesting, something. But it's really just about Devonte and, right. and Aaron. Every week, there's a new episode of this ridiculous reality show, and each week is more um 
annoying than the last. Isn't that why people watch reality shows? So that the characters can get on your damn nerves and you yes. can get mad about them and, oh. and talk. Yeah, that's how I feel when I'm watching the Jets. It's like, I can't wait <laughs> to watch the Jets and get so angry <laughs> and tell my group chat what the hell is going on. I mean, why? I just, I, again, I, I mean, I'm, this has, you know, been covered over at nausea. I just don't, what is the plan there? Like, I just, like, so, so next year, like, what is, you know, Tay going to do, man? Like, I, you know, I just, I don't, it, it feels like this is going to only end poorly. And then, and like, you put these people together that are already combustible. They've shown that they cannot get along with people. They got no problem calling out folks. The coach is already gone. I'm like, bro, I just, I don't know. But it, 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 it is the one time, though, that I feel like the Jets being bad is actually, like, watchable yeah right it's great like when you live in new york and you have to watch the jets normally it's bad you don't care nothing about what's going on there bro i don't want to see you know chad pennington no offense but <laughs> you know uh, uh this i was like i kind of i kind of tune in to see y'all be terrible yeah i'm looking forward to it um the, it, it kind of feels like the strategy feels like if you are not a professional chef but you tasted something that you liked mm. and you was like <laughs> i'm gonna recreate that and you just keep throwing, like, maybe this is the extra ingredient. Let's put some of this in it. They just keep throwing stuff in this pot, hoping that it turns into something good, and it just gets worse and worse. I got, I got a question. What do you think is the better outcome for us? Okay. If it works or if it blows Ooh. up? Oh, well, man. it depends on what you mean by us. Us in sports media yes, blows up. Us as citizens of the world, we need it to work. Aaron Rodgers. I don't need Aaron Rodgers with more free time. Really? <laughs> I, need, okay. I don't need Aaron Rodgers okay, okay. angry and upset with more free time looking to prove something to us. The election hasn't happened yet. Everybody oh, trying to get say, him, We yeah. still got the election to get through. I was like, I don't know. Like, we that's can't still another have variable. another right. loose cannon in the streets <laughs> <laughs> without work to focus his energies. I do not want his hands idle. I, I want this Bro. man Winning games, playing well. I want him to come on McAfee with his chest out, feel good about Feeling himself. Feeling good. Yeah, I want yeah, him to right, right, lift right. his confidence. This is something that I'm sure you've learned with your young children. It's like, yeah, I want him to feel good. I want him to be happy. Like, they don't oh, want the weight yeah. of the world on him because when they upset, everything gets harder. Look, man, any, I mean, you all know this. One angry person at the workplace can make it impossible. <laughs> yes. Like, even if they're not important. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if somebody's not important, it's like, hey, man, we got to deal with this person. <laughs> if they're at the center of everything and they mad, which is like my two-and-a-half-year-old son, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like, everything, the whole world revolves around you, bro. We depend on your vibes for the day to be good, uh, you know? I, and that's the same thing with Aaron. <laughs> that, that's something that, um, I, so, I guess I, traditional relationships – when you get into like a, a relationship, it feels like the like emotions of the relationship are governed by the woman and yes, and they don't realize this, but once they have kids, they gave oh, that man. up. Oh, they bro. gave like, it up. It's just like, you 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 a role player with me now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you ain't the star no <laughs> yeah, more. Welcome. Hey, yeah, welcome. Jo- out on that corner and catch and shoot. You better, you better yeah, catch and stop shoot. Dribbling. Stop no, dribbling. Stop no, dribbling. No, Give, no, no, no. Give it up. Yeah. Switch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, so we're not making more accommodations um, for you. Yeah. When we first had our, our our kids were young and my wife would never want to travel without them. And it's like I get nervous, or whatever. Oh. oh. Oh, that's changed because you know what happens when we travel without them. Oh, she's the star again. Back in the middle. Y'all, we run the, yep. we run the <laughs> office through you. <laughs> <laughs> we run the office through you. Then we get back home and we got to check with the kids, see if any of them want to get some shots up. Oh, man, look, man. And this is like, I mean, also the pictures, too, because once you have kids, like nobody is ever talking about the pa- the parents who want a picture anymore. It's all about your kids. Yep. So, yeah. And it's just like, hey, man, like we get back together. It's like, oh, yeah, I have an attractive wife. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody reminder, understands. Like, yeah. Also, it's, reminder, it was, yeah. it's sometimes shocking. You go a few weeks or whatever without doing something together or sitting and talking. I'm like, Oh, shit, I like you. Yeah, man, you got something interesting to say. What is going on in your life? Bro? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something yeah. interesting to say. This is cool. Great to meet you. Yeah. Well, I, I'll give you all a tip, and this is okay. running too long. But I, what we do is we send each other throughout the day, we uh, send each other text, and we add it to a list that we will talk about uh at the at the end of the it used to be at the end of the day and we'd be like okay let's review because you know sometimes stuff happens and you forget about it or you can't remember it or whatever and so that's what we've done that's what we figured out really early when i was traveling a lot for work um i like that and so now it's like we do that yeah man it's a little something something. i got seven years in the game um yeah well i just sent eggplants (laughs) 
<laughs> um, <laughs> anybody else want to talk about some football games? I'll give I'll give I'll give my guilty pleasure game. <laughs> yes, this one's real guilty. Uh, Giants Eagles. Uh, These teams aren't good. <laughs> uh, are talented. Yeah, the good. Eagles are talented. Well, I was gonna say yeah. it, it's 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 official. The Eagles are not good. Yeah, is that, is that how we're talking about them? Yeah, okay. I mean because if it goes back to last year. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh it's not just these first few games. They've been crappy for a minute now. They changed coaches, still stink. It's they just the the Georgia defense that was so vaunted. The defensive Man. line just hasn't totally worked. Vauntless. And the yeah. other thing is, this is like a test case for your quarterback situation theory. Like we obviously uh, Jalen Hurts is on his own a test case. So if you have Shane Sykin and it works a lot better, and now this Nick Sirianni, however much his hands are in the pot it's not working as well but Daniel Jones is also a test case for this where before he had Malik Neighbors the best player he ever threw to was really Wandale Robinson or Darius Slayton and Malik Neighbors is coming back this week and he's the most exciting rookie wide receiver since Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson a, a few years back and I don't I mean I Jalen Hurts had a much more successful career he's a better football player than Daniel Jones Right now, I don't know if the gap between them is really that big. See, See Charlie, you said that. Charlie, you go, go ahead, Joel. I, no, I mean, do you think? I mean, because look, oh, look, man, I, I want, and you all, we talked about this before. I want Jalen Hurts to succeed, man. You know what I'm saying? He's a Houston kid, uh, just like me. Uh, I, I like the way he carries himself. He's cool. He has had some success, and he handled like when he got benched for Tua in college, yeah. like he handled it like a G, mm-hmm. right? But. I've always been sort of dubious about the idea that he was a good quarterback. And I, I, is that sad? I shouldn't say. No, 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 no. We had this conversation a few weeks ago uh, at, okay. at the last meeting. We did a <laughs> okay. head count and we determined that there were enough that we could, we could um, share all of our opinions. We don't have. To, yes. So I. Yeah, it's you, a you, different time. Yeah, <laughs> but let's not get comfortable though. I don't want you to go overboard with criticizing right. Jalen. Don't go overboard because, as you know, <laughs> can snap back. <laughs> it be snapping oh. back. Did I go too far by Look, comparing man. him to Daniel Jones? Yeah. You 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 crossed yeah, the line, Charlie. I, like, I apologize. Crossed the line, I like, Charlie. Man. But that, I mean, that, didn't that say it all though? It's like uh, two years ago, you talk about comparing him to Daniel Jones. You might have to fight. <laughs> now it's like. That seems disrespectful, yeah. but let me think about uh, it. Yeah. I know you ain't mean it that way. Like I, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I, I trust your intentions. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's he hasn't been good, man, and it's yeah. it's not it's not great. The thing is that he's not bad. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the hard thing about evaluating him is it's like he's he's not just throwing the ball away and just completely atrocious, and they're still finding a way to win. But it's when you watch the tape, independent of the game. It's very hard to find plays where he is additive, mm-hmm. and you're like, "Oh, right. that was okay." It's just like, yeah, he's kind of driving the ship, but <laughs> is that what you're steering the ship? Yeah, but sure, he's sure, avoiding yeah. major icebergs, but he ain't really, <laughs> he really ain't doing much. I mean, to be fair, he be getting his I mean, tush pushed though. That's that's his best asset. I mean, yeah, man. I just like I kind of feel like if he can't, I mean, if he's if he's turning over the ball, he's like going to eventually become unplayable. But if, like, he can just get through this stretch and get more comfortable in the pocket and, like, w- maybe get some stability at the coaching positions, then maybe, like, you know. I love that. Like, maybe he can be Kirk Cousins. I love that. Maybe he can be Kirk yeah. Cousins, right? Like, nobody thought Kirk Cousins would be here all these years yeah, later. Sure. Why not Jalen, you know? I love it. Just just get more comfortable in the pocket. Uh, the, right. the hardest thing to do. <laughs> just, yeah, right. just start I'll, I'll doing it. it. If he can handle that. If he can handle that, <laughs> give him the man some time. Like, yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, the, so. the last thing I'll say about this game, is we as a society went way too far about undervaluing running backs. Uh, like no 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 yeah. that yeah that go ahead Charlie. Well Saquon Barkley like I think they would be underwater right now if they didn't have Saquon Barkley on this team. I know um, in the Atlanta game he had the drop pass, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like yeah. he's been their most consistent offensive player with AJ Brown out, and they paid him like. Like he's Khalif Raymond. This was, I mean, this was the take that uh, where I, I diverge. I mean, I diverge many times from the yeah. analytics community, but this was the take where we talked about when paying Christian McCaffrey. And I was making the point that, okay, don't pay running backs, but some of these 
They run it back. Yeah. Some of these guys <laughs> right. are engines to an offense. Do you want to have an offense? Pay for an yes. offense. Go ahead and buy one because as soon as Derrick Henry shows up, you know what you got? Right. You got an offense. You got a top of right. the league, uh, Ryan Tannehill. You know why? Because Derrick Henry big toting it yeah the same thing <laughs> the same thing with Saquon you, and so like that makes sense and I understand why people are saying that like relative to the average cool that's all fine and dandy but there are exceptions and the point I get why you have that rule you have that rule out there because some dumb people are gonna do something dumb and overpay somebody who's mediocre but when you look and see a guy and I think it's also from being a defensive player I look at it and I'm like all right I get what you're saying, but I'm going to spend the whole week trying to figure out what to do about right. that man. If you got one of right. them, then pay him whatever. I don't give a what the market says to pay him. But they didn't even have to pay him. Right. His cap hit this right. year's $3.8 million. Stupid. Like that's like you look at the guys who have really swung some of the best offenses. Christian McCaffrey being out. Yeah. The 49ers can't score in the red zone. Derrick Henry being in Baltimore. It's not, I'm not saying it's all right, on him, but, but he's a huge part of it. And Saquon is keeping an offense that has been, like, incredibly that's struggling a lot. It's keeping them afloat. The thing that's interesting to me is that, like, I'm kind of in the middle of both of you guys. Because, yeah. like, I, as a former running back myself, yep. I didn't do what, you know. But but I, I do definitely believe in the value of a great running back, right? And that they've been undervalued way too much over the last few years. The thing is, I never thought Saquon was that good. And this is going to sound crazy. I thought Saquon was a great athlete. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, oh, you see him in the field, he's so explosive. But I feel like... At Penn State, he didn't. He never averaged like five yards a carry. He had one great year in the NFL. I was like, he seems more like a concept, or like of a great running back. I had never really seen it that much, but this year I'm like, oh, that's a bad. You know, I <laughs> yeah. can't curse, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we, 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 we never curse on this show. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, yeah. No, I mean, I think the Saquon has always been like. Uh, kind of boom or bust, I guess, like mm -hmm. a big play right. type of guy. Right. But in this in this offense with this offensive line. But, yeah, I mean, the situation always matters. But it, I think we are on the same page in that if somebody is special, and maybe you don't agree that Saquon falls in the category, but you agree that if someone's special, you give them, give them whatever they need. And I guess, Saquon, to your point, the – the um, Giants were never really good with Saquon, yeah. even when he was balling. But he seems to really help this offense now, and he's worth whatever they're paying him, which is not enough. Last one. Uh, Last one. We'll so this is me. Yeah. I got the guilty pleasure game now. So I'm going to go with uh, the Bengals and Browns. Mm. And so, yeah. like, I'm an old AFC Central fan. You know what I'm saying? I go back a ways with these dudes. But I think right about the time that the Browns gave away Amari Cooper, I was like, oh, like – they're actually have decided to give up. Yeah. Like the season is over. And I don't know, like, you know, Dominique, you can tell me, like, I don't know if you've ever been on a team like that in your career. Yeah, never. But like at week six to be like, wow, we've got 11 more of these, <laughs> you know, and, and be like, like, there's no hope on the way. Like, I mean, you can't, you know, they, like they can't bench Deshaun unless he gets hurt. Right. So, like, what are they supposed to do? I don't have to – well, they're trying to get him hurt. We already had this conversation last <laughs> week where they he got hit more than any quarterback in football, um, and they keep yeah. dropping him back. The game hurts. I don't have to tell you that. But I cannot – I fortunately, every team that I was on either made the playoffs or we missed at the end of the season. I can't imagine yeah. – showing up to work and i know mm -hmm. the money blah 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 blah. yes i would have showed up i would have did my job but that <laughs> is sad i remember showing up to work after one loss it was sad i hated it <laughs> it was awful you show up after multiple in a row with no hope for making the playoffs 11 weeks nah also the browns thought they were going to be a super bowl contender this yeah. year they thought right. if watson right. could be semi-competent they would be right there with that defense and they don't even have any recent success to, like, pull on to make them feel good about themselves. It's like, well, I guess you consider making the playoffs last year yeah. success, but. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, but Flacco walked out that door. You know, Flacco's <laughs> not walking through that door uh, again. And, yeah, I, I, oh, I, yeah I, I can't imagine them being this bad this early and, like, having to cast it. But, you know, the one cool thing, though, and we talk about this as special running backs, Nick Chubb going to be coming mm -hmm. back, man. You know what I'm saying? We might get to see Nick Chubb again. I don't know, like. It's kind, he's 28 years old. He's had leg injuries, a, a lot of them. Maybe he'll, he'll probably never be the Nick Chubb old, but, like, as a guy that roots for running backs, I'm like, okay, like, maybe this can be a little spark or something, you know? If you want Nick Chubb to come back, you don't like him very much. <laughs> 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 Nick Chubb, better slow play that rehab.
<laughs> I know. Anyway. It's like, I got a soft tissue he, I got a soft tissue He, he can't do it right He blew now. it by squatting 585 again in this season with the wave bar. I hate that, Stop man. Doing it, I hate Don't it. Do that, I hate man. it. Don't encourage these people to put that trash on their back. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Why do you need fun? Not you, Charlie. No, I Nick. know. Why do you need that? Anyway, uh, Joel, thank you so much for joining us. We have to do, do this again sometime. This was excellent. A lot of fun. I appreciate that oh, advice. I'm going to text my wife as soon as we're done with the show. All right, brother. Yeah, little know, little know, man. But anytime, my anytime, brother. My pleasure. And Charlie, good to see you, man. It's great. Thank you. All right, thank you for joining us on another great episode of Dominique Foxworth Show. Thank you to Mina, Joel Anderson, all the great producers. Paul Villa, I love you, and we out. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show.